Hello, my name is Matt Rabel and this is a screencast showing you how to get started with jhipster5. jhipster is an application that generates an application, so it's more like a generator than an application. Some call it even a platform, but it generates a Spring Boot backend and an Angular or a React frontend. The tutorial I'm going to be showing you today is on GitHub at mrabel slash jhipster5-demo. If you click and view the gist version on ascidoctor.org. You can see it in a better view. You'll see here we're going to create a project. We're going to generate some entities. I'll be creating a blog and then entries and tags and everything like that in there. We'll add some business logic to make it so people can't see each other's entries and blogs. We'll make some UI enhancements and then we'll deploy it to the cloud. So to begin, if you click on options and scroll up a bit, you'll see the jhipster quick start tells you to install jhipster with yarn you can also use npm and then you'll just create a new directory you'll cd into it and run jhipster so I already have jhipster 5.0.1 installed and I have java installed and I have node installed we recommend you use the latest uh, long-term support version of node that's 8.3.11 at the time of this recording I'm using 9.8 because I like to live on the edge. So if there is a file there, then delete it. And then create your directory, cd into it, and run jhipster. jhipster allows you to create both monoliths and microservice architectures. With microservices, you'll generate a gateway in the front and then microservice apps in the back. I'm going to create a monolithic application. I'm going to call it blog. We'll use org.jhipster.blog as the default package name. I'm not going to use the registry. We'll use JWT authentication, SQL, Postgres for production, H2, hcache as the default implementation for spring caching, Hibernate second level cache, Maven, no Elasticsearch or WebSockets, Angular 6, no SAS, internationalization, yes, and we'll choose Spanish as our second language and we'll go with Protractor. You can see that took about eight minutes to complete. I've seen much faster times on different hardware with faster internet so that time can vary but chances are you're only creating your application once and then starting from there so not a big deal in the beginning. We'll go ahead and open this up in IntelliJ IDEA and you can see it ships with this dot editor config among a number of other dot files and this basically configures your IDE to know that hey I'd like to use spaces and I'd like to indent it by four spaces so um, unless it's JSON then only do two and so it's a great little feature that's just part of the attention to detail that jhipster has to show you all these various niceties and to configure things for you so to begin I'm going to actually start the application so we have blog app right up here we can click play and rather than using maven that'll just use our IDE to actually start it right up so now we'll click on localhost 8080 and we can sign in with admin admin or user user you can see it's got a number of nice features user management where you can add or edit existing users. Health metrics, which shows the performance of your app down to how long each method takes to run. Health configuration, the actual configuration, so these are all the various settings that you can change. Auditing and logging. Logging will actually allow you to configure it on the fly, so if you said org spring framework and you want to change it to info, you could do that and it'll actually change it in the background. And Swagger API, so you can see the various REST endpoints that exist. And if you want to try them out, you can do that as well. So I'm going to create a blog app, like I mentioned, start.jhipster.tech is where JDL Studio now lives. JDL stands for jhipster domain language. So under design entities, I can go in and actually pull up some that I've created in the past. jhipster online allows you to create an application 
just like we did from the command line but using a web browser and then export it to github so that's a slick feature too so this is one that I already created you can see we have a blog entity we have an entry we have a tag and if we look at the diagram over here we can see that there's one to many relationship from blog to entry tag has many to many to entry and then blog to user has many to one so here's how we define our relationships and pagination we specify that on those two as well so now I can save this text file locally the same as in my downloads directory and I can stop my application and I can import those and generate crud for all of those entities so I'll just click stop and then open a terminal and run jhipster import jdl and point to that jhipster jdl.jh so while that's going I'll go ahead and show you the structure of the application just like any old Java application source main Java is where most of the Java code lives it's prompting me to overwrite the liquidbase file liquidbase is used to create the tables and establish relationships between them so I'll say OK to that so this is the main Spring entry point, the blog app. And then you might be familiar with Spring's Java config. We have caching configuration here. You'll notice it changed that to add some new caching for our new entities. We also have security configuration for Spring security. Repositories added a few new ones. Security configuration for Java authentication. Some services and then most of our REST endpoints are in here. And then under resources is where our liquid base files are. We have some new ones now for blog, entry, and tag as well as constraints between them. And under web app, app is where all of the Angular project goes. So you might be familiar with app.module. Well now under entities we have all of our new entities created as well. So that took about a minute and 14 seconds to complete. Now I can rerun the app and it'll have those new entities in it. So open up localhost 8080. Sign in. We can just do it as admin. And now we have a blog. We have entries. So we can go and create a new blog. We'll call it admins blog. Save it. Users blog. Save it. And then let's create a few entries. We'll say first day of summer was great. June 21st, 2018. We'll set that to 20. There we go. Set that in the admins blog. And then we'll say jhipsterconf was great. It was in Paris on June 21. We'll put this in the users blog. And then we'll say another one. Jhipster v5 is out. Released the night before jhipsterconf. Actually, the day. Uh, we'll do that on the 20th and we'll say that was about 1 in the afternoon and we'll put that in the user's blog as well. So you see one of the problems that we have here is everyone can see anything. So if we go back to blogs, if you log in you should only see your blog. So let's fix that. We'll put this on the left, put this on the right, and we'll look for blog resource. That's the class we're going to need to change. So if you look in the get all blogs method, you can see it finds all the blogs. Well, we want to find by the current user. So find by user is current user already exists for us. That's done by jhipster when we create a many to one relationship with user. So we can just use this method. It says select all from blog where the user happens to be matching that username. So if we recompile this, we are using Spring DevTools. It's in the class path. It's part of jhipster. 
And what that will allow is if you compile something, it'll actually rebuild and restart your app for you. So that works on the server side, it's pretty slick. We can refresh. And now you see it excludes users from there. So if I were to log out and log in as user, I only see my blog. However, if I go to entries, I see all of them. The other problem is if you go to blog and you click on 1052 and I'm logged in as user and I go to 1051, I can see the admins blog. So to fix that, you can use some additional logic that basically allows you to, to filter out or prevent someone from actually seeing data they shouldn't. So you can see this code here says, hey, if a blog is found, and it has a user on it and that user's login equals security utils get current user login then go ahead and throw a 403 so so now if I recompile this and I go back to blogs click on 1052 and try to get to 1051 you can see it doesn't let me so a little better security now the other thing is we want to limit entries. So entry resource, and we'll go into the get all entries, and we'll change this to equal entry repository, and find by blog user login order by date descending. That is a method that we're going to create on our repository, and once we have that, Spring Data JPA will take care of creating a query that matches that that says find you know by the user's login and then order by date descending so we can create this on our repository and we'll just change this to current user login and then rather than recompiling each one I'll restart everything Now if we refresh, we only see our entries. So that's working. One of the things you're going to want in a blog is the ability to have HTML. So we can say something like, it was excellent. And save it. And you'll notice it's escaped, right? We don't actually see the HTML. So to fix that, we're going to open up entry component.html and we'll navigate down here to this entry content and rather than just rendering the raw variable we'll set the inner HTML of this tag to be the variable name and rather than restarting everything with Spring Boot we can actually use yarn start and that'll start up a webpack dev server and we'll use browser sync to reload the browser whenever we change any of the front end files So login as user, user will go ahead and remember me. And we go to those entries and you can see now we have HTML being rendered. It still doesn't quite look like a blog though. So let's take this table and replace it with our own. That's a bit more like a blog look and feel. And you'll see that all worked. And so we could even go in here and edit things and it'll still all those buttons will still work. We can delete them. Yay! So now the last thing I wanted to show you is how to deploy to Heroku. So if you have Heroku CLI installed, uh, you might get some errors like I do. Uh, let's try it from a different terminal window. I still get them. But it works anyway since it prints this out and says, hey, I got it here. So we can do uh, clear, and if you're not logged in, you'll need to do Heroku login. I already am, so I can do jhipster Heroku now. And this will ask me a couple questions. What do I want to deploy it as? I'll do jhipster5 demo. We'll do it in the US, and we'll compile it on Heroku, which can be a bit faster because it'll do the compilation there, and it'll actually have the jar, and it can start it, versus if we did it locally, We'd have to build everything and then upload the jar. 
So it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite palm.xml. That's because it adds a plugin for future deployments for Heroku. I'll say A for all. And this typically takes about six minutes to complete. So you can see, as estimated, just over six minutes. If we do Heroku logs tail, it'll show if it's a, if it's started up yet or not. Looks like it's still starting. Now that it's started, you can run Heroku open. And your app's up and running. You can even log into it. So that's using Postgres on Heroku. Shows everything's working. Of course, there's no data in here because, well, it's a brand new database. So if you want to learn more about jhipster, I encourage you to go to jhipster.tech and uh, click on Learn. The project itself is on GitHub at Generator JHipster. And we like to say, don't create issues unless you found real bugs in the project. If you'd like to contribute, you're more than welcome to contribute. And if you have questions, please use Stack Overflow with the JHipster tag. Thank you very much and hope you have a nice day.